and um, welcome to the next section in the uh, chapter on feature effects. So in this session we'll talk about um, uh, individual conditional expectation curves, in short ice curves, and we'll uh, discuss them as a um, method to characterize local effects. We'll also add um, a few comments on how to sample grid points for uh, producing the ice curves. And you should also already know that ice curves are a fundamental building block and, and I don't know, extra component in order to construct the um, partial dependence plot. And um, yeah, usually they help also to um, discuss and visualize potential problems with interactions in PDP plots. But this is um, a topic for an upcoming session. Okay, so let's start. Um, so our motivation is a very basic question. So how does changing the value of a single feature of a given observation, how does that affect our model prediction? So in a certain sense, what's the effect of a feature on the outcome when we fix all other feature values uh, to the value of a certain observation that we are currently looking at? So I guess this might be easier to explain this here uh, with this plot. So on the left-hand side here, we have a prediction surface of a 2D model. So there are two features, X1 and X2. And again, I guess this is easier to explain this for a regression model. So there will be some numerical outcome, but this can also work with numerical prediction scores for, uh, for example, binary classification models. So maybe this is a decision score, or maybe this is also a posterior probability of a binary classification model. And now we select a certain observation and um, this observation that we've selected is uh, this guy here. And we now want to visualize the change in predicted outcome um, for different values of x2 while we keep x1 fixed. So in this, in this uh, instance, we would plot the ice curve with respect to the feature of x2 uh, at that observation x star here. Um, and that means um, we take our function f hat, okay, um, and um, we basically set, so we have an observation, maybe let's call that x star, um, and we set all other features to the um, values observed in x star. So this would be x star 1, and then we would plot the function only as a uh, yeah, variable function in x2 if there would be for example a feature x3 which we don't have here just uh, for completeness sake we would also set x3 to the observed value of that feature in x star okay and this is pretty simple right now we just have uh, kind of uh, pretended that all of the um, variables here in our function f hat are constant and fixed to the values of x star except for this guy here x2. So we just make that variable, we plug in different values and we plot the resulting slice function uh, that we obtain yeah, when we plot x2 now at uh, various hypothetical uh, grid values. And we've also here on the left, on the right hand side, um, plotted the other data points on that ice curve. And that gives us um, a reasonable form of local interpretation. So we can now ask questions like, so let's make, for example, say X2 is something like, so if a certain observation, uh, I don't know, we have a person data, X star is a specific person, and uh, that person has, I don't know, um, age. So X2 would be something like age of that person, and the age is, I don't know, 30 years old. And we now uh, would ask the question, okay, how will the predicted outcome of that function change if we vary the age, um, I guess, not to minus five. So uh, I don't know, maybe this is, uh, um, the scale here is a little bit different um, and then for an example, but we can now ask the question, so what will happen if the person is 25 years old, uh, 35 years old, 40 years old, and so on, okay? And all other feature values would stay the same. And this gives rise to these uh, local effect inter interpretations. And I guess you can also talk about, I don't know, it kind of gives you also counterfactual what if perspective. Yeah? So what, what would happen if I change the feature value of that specific feature age under consideration? Um, 
it's not hard to compute this for a complete data set. So uh, I guess uh, the next uh, couple of slides are maybe a little bit even over complicated for this. So let's fix some notation. So we'll select either one feature of interest or maybe even multiple features of interest. And these feature sets we usually denote with a capital S. Uh, so in practice, XS is either one or two features. Uh, you know, and sometimes um, we can see that these ice curves also are computational building blocks and other methods. And then XS might, might be larger than two. But um, it's pretty obvious that we can't really visualize them that very well. Okay. And um, I guess on the slide here, there is um, not a lot of new information. So there's just a little bit more um, notation. Uh, so we now create um, our uh, ice curve function. Yeah? So we um, have f hat um, for our feature of interest xs. And um, yeah, we use a certain um, observation x star. And we make that function now variable only for the features in s. Yeah, and all of the other feature values are treated as constants and passed into the function and yeah, fixed for that, uh, for that function. And uh, usually we um, put these ice curves at the training data points. Uh, we can put them also at uh, arbitrary points. Um, but very often we also do this for the training data. And then we would have an ice curve for each ith observation, which we um, yeah, denote here with this. Uh, I in parentheses. And how is that computed? It's pretty simple. So we take our data matrix, um, we take it in, apart. So um, take it apart in terms of rows. So we start with the first uh, training instance. Yeah, so this would uh, be x, x1 here. So x1, um, the, first, the first instance. And we uh, use a grid. Uh, here we just uh, uh, took some regular values from one to three um, and then we plug in uh, so these are these grid points here um, for which we want to plot the function okay and to keep it simple we just use three points here three regular um, uniformly um, spaced values from one to three and uh, now we plug in uh, one for our first observation at x1 we plug in two we plug in three we compute the predictions um, and that gives us uh, these three um, yeah, ice curve predictions at these three grid points. And now we do exactly the same for the second point. Uh, so x2 here in this case is row. We do exactly the same. We plug in one, two, and three. So the grid values into the first uh, into the first component of our feature vector. We compute the prediction. So there's no, I don't know, specific extra marginalization um, or averaging going on. We just plug in these grid values when everything else is fixed um, um, to, the, uh, uh, to the observed features um, in yeah, minus S, so to speak. So everything we are not looking at. And we do also do this for the third data point. And that gives us all three ice curves for our uh, data set with n equals three. So if you would do that, for each training instance, we get exactly as many ice curves as we have points in our training data set. Um, some comments on how these grid values are usually constructed. So uh, very often we have uh, uh, a few common choices here. So we can either use an equidistant uh, grid value for the feature range, so feature range. So we compute something like the minimum value of X1 and the minimum value of um, and the maximum value of x1 and then just um, uh, produce an equidistant grid between these uh, min and max uh, values or we randomly sample values or um, i guess uh, that might be the most reasonable choice we use quantile values for the observed feature values um, and except for the equidistant grid the other two options preserve approximately the marginal distribution um, for the feature of interest so they might be a little bit more re reasonable and they avoid uh, unrealistic feature values for distributions with outliers usually yeah? so because uh, in that case here um, we have never really seen data in that range so in a certain sense that's uh, again a form of extrapolation for that technique and we would have to be a little bit careful so i guess a more reasonable choice is, is this uh, quantile grid here